Hey Tubes. So on this installment of the Dana 44 build, we are going to be tackling the high steer bar that connects the passenger side over to the driver's side. Off camera I installed the hubs, tightened down the bolts. I did not put the cotter pins in and I did not put the grease fittings in yet. I installed the cover with the gasket. Made a little notation for myself so I didn't forget that I didn't put any oil in it yet. I've also done the same on this side. I'm going to go through explain to you how I determine what the length of the tube needs to be. I'm going to cut it. We're going to do some welding on it. Off camera I have also gone through and installed a new pinion crush seal. Okay. And then I've installed a new, um, what do I want to call this? Hub eccentric, okay, or drive shaft eccentric. So drive shaft coupler, or pinion coupler. There's about a billion different names that they go by. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna get you guys set up and we're gonna get started here. All right, so first thing I did, put these tape on here so that way I can mark what my dimensions are going to be. Step one is going to be take your knuckle and move it over so that it is doing a far turn, a tight turn. Okay. Now, next thing I'm going to do is, it does not really matter which one of these uh, ball joints you put on. Just make sure that you're putting your steering ball joints on your inner bolt holes. Okay, and I got that kind of snug down a little bit. Okay. Same thing over on this side. Now we've got a whole bunch of adjustment from this point here all the way up to this edge here. It's all threaded. So we just have to be in the ballpark. Okay, so we got a lot of movement. Okay, I can even I'll move that one out a little bit so that that was a little bit tighter. We'll do that one there too. So that way we can tow in or tow out if we need to. Alright. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a measurement from there to there. I'm going to call it 46. Now, this is the cool thing. I don't have to be super accurate. And the reason why I don't have to be super accurate is this, this whole axle, once we get everything done, it's going to go to the alignment shop and it's going to get aligned. And as long as it we're in the ballpark, that's all that matters. So again, I'm just going to take a second measurement here. All right. Now this time I'm a little shorter. I'm 45 and three quarters. Alright, so 45 and 3 quarters. So let's write that down. Now, like I was saying, I've got all this play in here that even if I screwed up something major, the alignment shop still has 2 inches because they've got the, all this here, okay, so that's over an inch. They've got the exact same thing on the other side, that they can actually take these knuckles out and they can spin them out and they can adjust them. Um, later on, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna show you how we do something called a tape measure or an off-road um, alignment. I've done this on my pickup trucks in the past when I've had to replace parts and components, and it, 
it works really good and it gets me to the, to the alignment shop without tearing anything apart. Um, this truck is literally going to go on a trailer, go to the alignment shop, and then it's going to come off the trailer back here. Um, it's, you know, for me to drive it down there, uh, it just doesn't make any sense because there's no plates on it yet. It's a half an hour drive for me to get to my alignment guy. So um, we're going to do it this way. Um, I've got this here. This tubing. Now this tubing is DOM tubing. Okay, it's drawn over mandrel is what they call it. Uh, this is quarter inch wall. I think it's one and a half inches in diameter. All right. So we are going to take this stuff here. Um, you do not want to skimp on your steering. That's, uh, that's one thing I will say. You do not want to skimp on your steering if you're doing this high steer kit. Um, this tubing here, I buy it online. Um, I'm sure I could go down to one of my steel yards um, here in in, um, in town or out. Well, not in town, but downtown um, and uh, pick up some DOM. But for me, I have to look at it as it's going to be a least an hour and a half drive round trip to go get the pipe okay, or tubing. And then um, I might have to play some hunting around, making phone calls or whatever, you know, if, if it doesn't fit into my schedule, whether they're open on the day that I'm working, you know, then I'm going to have to, you know, take a half a day off of work or, you know, plan it around a vacation time or something. It's just, sometimes it's just purchasing on the internet is just easier. It might cost you a little bit more in the beginning, but overall it's just, you know, it, it just makes sense. So I've actually bought, this is the second, um, steering set that I bought. I bought a set for a Dana 60 and unfortunately I don't think I'm going to be using the Dana 60 set. So if anybody out there is interested in a Dana 60 set uh, for uh, not, well let's see here be 91 to 93 um, Dodge Ram single uh, single axle yeah I think that's what it came out of. It was a 90 I want to say it was a 93 Ram 3500 single axle or single wheel I should say not not the dually style wheel um, with the kingpins I have that kit uh, possibly available but what we're going to do now is we're going to take this over to the uh, uh, bandsaw the Kalamazoo and we're going to cut the um, cut it to length we're going to grind a bevel onto here and then we're going to go ahead and set it up on there and we are going to weld it home so this is a kind of a quick and easy project, um, but yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get you guys set up over at the Kalamazoo. Alrighty, we got our part set up in the Kalamazoo. It is right on my mark, exactly where I want it to be. There's nothing to it but to do it. I do like this band so now that I've got it dialed in it does a pretty nice job with its cuts okay we're gonna take our other piece obviously our good piece and we're gonna grind a chamfer all the way around the edge I wish I could put it in the lathe and run it on the lathe but unfortunately the um, the diameter of the opening is just a little on the small side for that so let's uh, get you guys set up in the bench and then we'll uh, do some grinding. All right guys, I was gonna set you guys up at the 
uh, vise with a angle grinder, but uh, then it, I always forget that I have this little belt grinder. Um, what I've done is I've taken and put my uh, Incro uh, miter gauge that I'd normally use for woodworking. I put that onto um, this, the T-slot here, clamped it down. It's set at a 45 degree angle. The cool thing about this Incro that I love is that it has got a um, angle gauge on here. Now you can see I don't use it that much because well, I just don't do a lot of woodworking these days more into metal working but um, yeah so we're gonna go ahead turn this guy on and we're gonna grind a 45 degree bevel on the ends of our pipe someday I'm actually gonna do a restoration on this this is a uh, craftsman six inch belt grinder All right, so I just want to show you guys what it looks like after I get it done with the belt grinder. Got a nice consistent 45 degree grind. Both sides. And then I just take my little Noga deburr and zip on the inside, just to take care of it and clean up that burr. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started on setting this up for welding. All right, tubes, I've got our bar that we just got done cutting and grinding. I've got that set back up into our um, steering or our axle. And what I'm gonna do is I've just left a little bit of a gap right here. Let's see if you guys can see that. I've left just a little bit of a gap there so that when I put my weld in, I can get my weld down as low as possible. I'm going to get you guys set up here. All right. I am going to go ahead and just put a couple tack welds on here. I'm going to do this side and I'm going to do the other side. Um, maybe I can get you guys angled a little bit better so you can see both sides. Perfect. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll run a full bead afterwards. All right, so those tack welds just are gonna keep everything a little bit on the more square side. I'm gonna tell you this right now. If you don't feel comfortable welding, take this down to a local welder and let them do it. it for the 60 or $70 you're gonna spend on this, you're gonna have peace of mind, okay? So I feel confident in my welds, so I'm gonna go ahead and weld this myself.
bring you guys in a little closer so you guys can see what this looks like. Spin it the other way. It's starting to pinch down on the uh, clamp. So that's a very good weld. Um, again, I'm going to go through, I'm going to just put another bead on here just to blend it in a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to go through wire wheel this and then I'm going to send it off for powder coat. All right, let me go ahead and do this uh, other little bead off camera and then we'll come back after I've wire wheeled it. All right, tubes. Well, I went through and wire wheeled like I said I was going to. Just to clean up the little bit of paint that was peeling up here and whatnot. I also went through and just did a quick alignment on this. I just put a straight edge on this face here. I did the exact same thing on the other side. And then I just took a tape measure, measured you know out here. And then I did the exact same thing here, measured going that way. And um, once the numbers were equal, I was pretty happy with it. Um, now, one thing I will say that I could have done differently is I do have an excess amount of threads showing here and here. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. I mean, I've still got all this threaded. Um, but what I could have done is I could have probably added maybe an inch or two onto this tube before we cut it. But um, other than that, I mean, I'm not too, too worried about it. There's more than enough threads in there. I'm plenty happy with the results of it. So uh, I'm going to send this off for powder coat. Uh, it'll be a while before we see it again. But um, that is it for right now. Um, I have to take a break from this project because I am ordering the bearings for the hubs and I'm um, having a little bit of a hard time finding a set that is in stock. So um, I've got some other projects that are on the burner. We are going to start up with those. Uh, this is not the end of this project by any means. It still needs to go underneath that truck right there. So um, we will pick up on this soon. Okay. But uh, it is not forgotten. It's just being shelved for a little while. Alrighty, guys. Oh, I don't need this piece of tape here anymore. We are done with that measurement. Alrighty, guys. Till next time. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And we'll talk to you later.